Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to Commute Talk. The gray and pissy morning edition once again. But I'm getting used to the weather, so who cares? Uh, so today, I thought I would talk a little bit about assertions and assertion failures, the role of assertions in testing, and um, the role of assertions in self-documenting code. So first off, let me just say that I love assertions. I think assertions are fantastic. Um, and I was very happy just yesterday when I was working on something and then I hit an assertion and that helped me diagnose the bug that I was seeing way, way faster than I would have without the assertion. Um, so I was very thankful to my past self for putting the assertion there and to whoever invented assertions. Now, um, assertions are amazingly useful if you, um, if you use them appropriately and correctly uh, because what they're really about is it's about documenting your own assumptions, right? Um, because I, I know that I've seen many code bases where they are kind of used as error handling and that's not really what they're for, right? Uh, if you have some kind of error scenario that, oh, this thing is not supposed to happen, but it is conceivable that it would, given bad input, for example, um, then you shouldn't be asserting that the input is good. Uh, at least uh, at least not in the <laughs> finished state of the program, you shouldn't do that. Uh, now, of course, it's a, it's a common pattern um, when you're working on something that, like, oh, I didn't implement this part yet, I'll just assert um, that the input is valid, <clears throat> and uh, that's something I do sometimes too. Although in those cases, I actually prefer to. Um, I have a special assertion that I use called assert not reached, which I got from WebKit, and it just uh, it just prints out a, a special message that like you're not supposed to get here. Uh, why are you here? Uh, and it for me that serves as a uh, a reminder that like. There's something here that either either is supposed to be unreachable forever, um, or it's just something waiting to be implemented, right? Uh, but either way, you're not supposed to get there right now. And if you get there, I wanna I wanna find out. But I, th I think assertions they go really really well together with unit testing and just testing in general because when you're testing something and you are sort of poking at it in ways that maybe it's not expecting to be poked then having these um, sort of clearly expressed um, assumptions um, regularly tested and verified by the code, uh, it's very, very helpful because the moment something goes wrong, like the sooner you have an assertion that your assumptions are holding, the sooner you'll find out. And uh, it can be stuff like, like, I expect this value here to be within this range, or um, I expect this thing here to not be um, a null pointer at the moment, for example, because so-and-so is supposed to uh, have put a pointer there. But whatever, like, you know how your code can have assumptions, right? Um, and uh, I, I find that, uh, especially when it comes to self-documenting code, which is something I'm a huge fan of, um, assertions are a very, very important part of that because assertions are essentially like power comments in my mind. They are, they are just like a comment that says, I um, assume this thing about the program's state at this point, but instead of just a you know, weak, pathetic uh, <laughs> comment, it's a strong assertion that like, if it doesn't actually check out, like if what you're saying is not true, then it will crash. Um, I think that's really awesome. And um, the more assumptions you have about your program, really the more assertions you should probably put in it. Um, so I, I like to I like to see that type of stuff. Um, now, I've been doing a whole bunch of um, kind of ad hoc, naive, uh, penetration testing, if you want to call it that, over the last couple of days. Just, you know, scouting for um, interesting kernel bugs and stuff. 
and I keep tripping up assertions. Like I can pretty consistently still hit assertions uh, within a couple of minutes of trying, but, and you know, I fix those issues as I go, but it's becoming a little bit harder to find actually exploitable bugs for me, but that, that doesn't really make me, make me confident in the, in the system um, security or stability as a whole. Rather, it just makes me um, feel like, okay, so I'm sort of reaching the end of my beginner's luck, um, naive penetration testing abilities here, and I need to uh, sort of expand my knowledge in that area probably, but um, the assertions, I can still hit the assertions and that's very, very good because even if, uh, even if I trip up some bug, um, it just stops the whole world, stops the kernel and gives me a very understandable, hopefully, error message that I can sort of work from um, to create a fix um, after working from it to understand the bug, of course. And um, I've started this practice now of trying to write little tests when I fix kernel issues. So I write like a tiny little function or a program that just uh, um, that just crashes um, and or asserts or whatever, and then I uh, commit that together with the uh, with the bug fix. And there's no good structure to it at the moment, but I figured I would just start, and the structure will evolve. Um, I would like to get to a point where eventually we would have a <clears throat> collection of little test programs that you can run and the goal of the run is just that everything not crash either it, either itself or the kernel um, or maybe the point of some of the tests should be to crash but <laughs> instead of doing something else <laughs> But anyway, um, just looking forward into, into that type of development style, um, it's something that I'm very used to from the past, from, from like working on Qt and WebKit, um, where there's the expectation that every bug fix is supposed to have an accompanying test. So um, I've just been uh, enjoying myself living outside of the realm of hardcore testing in this project for a long time, but uh, it's starting to get to the point where um, some amount of testing becomes necessary to just to ensure um, that we don't regress um, and you know recreate the same bugs we've had in the past. Um, but there's nothing formal about it yet. Just uh, just starting out, getting a feel for it. It would be nice if, if we could, if we would end up with a little um, generic POSIX kernel testing utility for this, but we'll see what comes of it. Anyway, assertions are amazing when you have this type of thing. That's what I wanted to get to. Uh, because if you have this generic stress test or if we can um, get around to porting one of these uh, syscall fuzzers or libc fuzzers or whatever, uh, any kind of fuzzer, really. Like a fuzzer is, seems like a really useful tool, right? And if you have assertions in your code, then it like doubles or triples the value that you can get out of fuzzing because um, you'll hit bugs sooner and you'll hit them more precisely um, because you'll, you very often when you have assertions, then you'll catch a problem before it would otherwise manifest. Uh, and that's, that's one of the big, big uh, benefits of assertions is that you don't have to wait until the program state gets corrupted and steps on its own toes somehow. You can, you can find out sooner if you've consistently asserted your assumptions. Um, so that's something I'm kind of excited about. And um, yeah. It would be good to, to get some kind of fuzzing up and going. If anybody's interested in fuzzing or um, knows how to, how to do it, is familiar with working with it, um, there is definitely room for exploration in that area in the Serenity system. Uh, it's just an advertisement. 
<laughs> um, maybe I should advertise things more often like that. There's a lot of stuff to do if you are interested. Wow, I just realized that I'm disappearing um, on top of the screen here. Um, but anyways, what do I want to say? I don't really have that much more to say. Assertions are amazing. Put lots of assertions. Just don't put useless assertions in your code. Um, and the more you use them, the more you start to understand which ones are useless and which ones are not. Um, and yeah, and of course, there's always the um, the concern that like right now we're doing a debug build with um, assertions enabled, and we do a bunch of things that um, help debugging like uh, malloc and free will always scrub. Um, like malloc will scrub all the areas that it hands out and free will scrub them when you give them back um, so that we get like we get uh, deterministic contents of, of these things and like if we do a release build should we really turn these things off I, I think probably not I like scrubbing a lot um, it turns a user after free uh, into a um, more like recognizable problem because it will like um, look a certain way because of the byte pattern and the system actually already has heuristics for this I don't know if you've seen them but if you uh, if you cause a crash in Serenity by like dereferencing a pointer in a structure after you've freed it then uh, very often the kernel can tell you that like hey this looks like recently freed memory and things like that and I really like things like that um, of course, it's it's not Valgrind or uh, ASAN, which we should eventually port as well. But it is it is a nice little thing. Anyways, anyways, I don't know what else to say. It's nice to nice to be back in the in the regular uh, commute routine, um, as much as I wish I would be sleeping right now. <laughs> It is also nice. So thanks everyone for hanging out with me on the commute. And I will see you next time. Bye.